was never an Indian American jazz musician before people in my generation. The way Hinduism has worked is that uh, you're born into a certain path. And then if that doesn't work for you, you, you get reborn and maybe you get a different path or maybe it's better, maybe it's worse, who knows, you know, depending on your deeds. But that's an, that's an old thing that's kind of not very relevant anymore. And it's also not something I ever subscribed to. My parents came from India in the 60s, and the idea of going into the arts just wasn't yet seen as an option. We were more concerned with putting down roots, you know, and establishing a certain stability. Uh, I was on track to become an academic uh, researcher in physics. It's a long path, you know, and you do it because you love it. And I found that I would get that feeling more from making music. So I was privileged to have a choice where I could say, you know, I have these options, but this is what is pulling me. You know, who really gets to choose their careers? People who have privilege and abundant opportunities. So you then have to examine, well, does the American dream exist as anything more than a dream? The music I make is primarily a part of the jazz tradition. It's an era of music that was created by African Americans against all odds. You know, it was, it was, I mean, talk about dreaming the impossible. <laughs> you know, this was uh, born in the most adverse circumstances and defiantly, you know. And part of the reason that it resonated with me was because, you know, when I was coming of age and thinking, well, is it even allowed or possible for me to be an artist in this country? <laughs> You know, the most obvious points of reference were the people who were forced to ask that same question and really under even much more dire circumstances and who then answered it with such resounding force that it was heard around the world. Thank you. It's beautiful. Oh, wow.